legend of Ham. Long, long ago, there was a small village made up of wooden huts called Ham. In one of the huts, there lived a girl called Orva. Orva had brown hair, hazel eyes, and wore a pink dress made out of wool. Orva was brave. One hot sunny day, Orva heard a horn blow. She knew that tune. It was the tune announcing an announcement from the king. Orva went outside to hear the latest great announcement. Good morning everyone. You're probably all wondering why I want to speak to you today. My treasure has been stolen by the Oogaboogas who came in the night. <gasps> there was a loud gasp of shock from the people of Ham. Your Majesty, how do you know that it was the Oogaboogas who stole your treasure? Asked Chad the farmer. My gods told me, replied the king. Whoever can take down my strongest guard will go and get my treasure back. The bravest of men lined up to take on the king's guard. Orva joined them. All the men failed. Everyone laughed when it was Orva's turn. They were so sure she would fail too. But Orva was small and quick. She slid through the guard's legs and pulled his legs so he fell backwards. Orva quickly rolled out of the way and leapt to her feet, grabbing the guard's sword. Orva poked him in lightly in the belly. The guard looked up at Orva's face beaded with sweat. He gave her a little wink and whispered, The villagers cheered loudly. Well done, Orva. Are you sure you're up to this? The king asked kindly. Of course, your majesty, I will not let you down. Orva replied confidently. I will leave right away. Orva packed her lucky sword, some fresh spelt Spelt bread, (laughs) which she had helped her mother bake earlier that morning. Orva went to the stable and jumped on her rainbow-coloured unicorn. (laughs) Together they travelled through the forbidden forest, of which people say... Whoever goes in never comes out. Orva wasn't scared until she saw a giant spider. Orva drew her lucky sword and killed it with a single blow. After a quick drink for herself and George at a nearby river, she continued her journey up a snow-topped mountain. She and George finally made it to the top, where Orva was confronted by a monstrous snake. Orva quickly grabbed some ghost peppers from a nearby bush and tossed them into the wide open jaws of the snake. Ghost peppers, in case you didn't know, are extremely hot peppers. The snake started steaming, then it burst into flames. Soon all that was left was an ash trail in the shape of a snake. There was a huge explosion. All the headed in the direction of the noise. Mount Jigaboo, the volcano, had erupted. A fire dragon flew out of the volcano amongst the spewing ash and lava. The dragon spoke to Orva in a thundering voice. I am the dragon of fire, and it's your unicorn I desire. I will defeat you with my water powers. Orva yelled bravely back. Do you really have water powers? Asked the dragon. No, but my unicorn has. Take that, shouted Orva, as George shot water out of his horn. The dragon took a full hit of magical water. His red leathery skin turned a pretty shimmery blue, like a mermaid's tail. The dragon tried to attack Orva with a fiery breath, but rainbow bubbles flew out of his mouth instead. Embarrassed, the dragon flew off to the cave behind the waterfall to make his new home. That is how the myth of the water dragon started. Slowly the volcano melted into the ground. Do the enchanted forest, George. Orva commanded. Orva arrived at the enchanted forest as the golden sun was setting. Orva rode up to a fairy house in a nearby tree. Where is the Ugabuka's home? She asked a fairy who was sitting on one of the branches. It's over there, the mossy hill with the spruce door. The fairy replied. Okay, thanks, said Orva gratefully. Orva hopped off George and silently crept up to the mossy hill. Orva flung open the door with a loud <laughs> All the Oogaboogas froze in fear. I'm here for the king's treasure. Orva cried fiercely. You will have to get through me first. Snarled Oglobar, the king of the Oogaboogas. Bring it on, said Orva with a smirk. Oglobar ran towards Orva. Orva dodged his attack. Orva hit Oglobar on the cheek. Oglobar tried to poke Orva with his staff, but he missed. 
All the sweat Oglobar off his feet. Oglobar scrambled back to his feet. Orva knocked him back down, pointing her lucky sword at him. Oglobar cried. Oh, I surrender. You can have the treasure back. I have another idea, said Orva. It is? Oglobar asked, confused. You and your friends can guard the treasure back at the castle. Orva and George led the Oglobars down the mountain towards Ham. Wait here, said Orva as they reached the king's house. Orva explained her idea to the king. What a fantastic idea, Orva. The king agreed. Hopefully one day the Saxons of Ham and the Ugarugas will live in harmony. The king gave Orva a special gem which would save her if she was in trouble. Orva became a fearsome warrior and led the king's army on many dangerous missions. Orva went down in history as a brave friend. To this day the name Orva means brave friend. The end.